Hello, Josue, welcome. Hello, teacher, how are you? Doing pretty good, my friend. How about yourself? I'm good, a little tired, but I'm okay. Okay, all right. Well, that's always good to hear. Hello, Alexander. Hello, Delmi. Hello, good evening, how are you? Good evening, doing good, thank you very much. How about yourself? Last day, everybody. Last day. Oh, el teacher. El día de, de como es graduation day. We will meet. Hello, hello, Harry, Raf, hello. Hello, hello. I think that's I think that's going to be it tonight. Somos pocos, pero locos. Did you guys ever watch the movie Sangre por Sangre? Blood in, blood out. Sangre por Sangre. Con Miklo. Hello, hello, Diana. I think it was Miklo Velka. I think it, I think that's the way. I, I don't remember exactly. I know the name Miklo, but I do remember they did a lot of, they would say a lot of weird stuff sometimes. Can you guys hear me okay? And can you guys see me okay? Good evening, teacher. I Good can evening, hear you Carlos. very well. Thank you very much, Shalo. Can you can you see me as well? Yeah. All right, all right. Good, good. Nice to hear. Nice to hear. Uh, let me see here. What I wanted to do today, uh, I mean, it's something I think that with with the previous class we started. Well, we did. We actually went through a couple of exercises that the main focus was pronunciation, intonation, stuff like that. And so I wanted to kind of review it with everybody again, and then jump right into some exercises that I had for you. 
and it had to do with pronunciation. This is also in preparation for the next module, right? So let me go ahead and share with you guys. Share with sound. There we go. All right. And then just to make sure, welcome everybody to your last day. Today is graduation. Yay! Do you guys remember your graduation day from either elementary, high school, or university? Do you guys remember? Was it exciting? Did you guys get nervous? Were you guys sad? Do you guys remember how you felt? A little bit, maybe, a little bit. Were you guys sad? Were you guys happy? From my side, you know, I graduating from elementary was a little bit sad because I had actually gone to the same universe, to the same university, to the same school from uh, uh, from the time I was in second grade all the way up to graduation, which was in the sixth grade. So you could say that it was around maybe four or five years of classes with the same people, with the same friends, with the same, uh, you know, more or less the same teachers. So once I graduated from elementary, it was a little bit sad. High school, junior high was a little bit different. I was actually happy that I was leaving junior high and going into high school. Right? Yeah, Alexander, you feel a little bit nervous, right? You don't know what's coming up. High school for me was really scary because I felt like maybe coming out of junior high, we were really young. And then the people that we saw in high school were like huge and they look really old. Um, have you guys ever seen those videos from 1990? From like the, like, like the favorite videos from the 90s? And all the people that you see in those videos, they look really old, even though they're like in high school and stuff like that. And then we say to ourselves, oh my God, you know, those kids look so big. They don't even look like high schoolers. Um, that has to be fake. Well, it wasn't fake. It wasn't fake. That's, that's how it was. The kids that went to school, uh, junior high and high school in the 90s, they were like, huge you know big beards they had mustaches they look really old man so i remember that all right hello jarvin hello hello hello, hello Welcome. Teacher. Good, evening. good evening sir good evening all right so we're gonna do a quick overview because this we have seen already with with most of the people that are here in class and then we're gonna jump right into some practices uh, these are some practices for preparation uh, remember that some of the teachers in advance they like to make you guys talk a lot they like you guys uh, to express yourself uh, read sentences read phrases um, have uh, conversations out loud so that could be coming up ahead in, ter in, in terms of the next modules. And so I like to usually use this presentation because it focuses a lot on pronunciation. And it, there, there's a couple of things that you have to think about and put together before you get into pronunciation, right? Um, so one of those is rhythm. The second one is intonation. And then the third one is strength. So all these three things make up pronunciation, okay? And so what is the rhythm? The rhythm uh, quickly, right, is I wanna say that it's like the little sound, a little song, uh, the rhythm that you put into the way that you talk. You can either have a slow rhythm and talk really slow, or you can have a really fast rhythm and then really, you know, kind of sound like you're, you're maybe reciting a poem or reading a sentence or, you know, just having a really, uh, I want to say, fluent conversation. 
and um, we usually use it with singing like when you guys hear a rap and they are doing the rhythm that's exactly what it is except they're doing it a little bit faster and they have a different beat to it right um, we usually have our own rhythm our own beat that we have to you know kind of talk to but in general when you speak in english there is a rhythm that you have to follow and so that's something that we're gonna quickly look at after that we're gonna look at intonation real quick and then stress to finish it off right so we're gonna start off with uh pronunciation in general and the rules for the rhythm for some of you guys remember we already saw that right we already saw some of this, but this is usually how it is. The rhythm rule is that you have content words and you have function words. And so the content words are the big important words in a sentence like bot, car, and Tuesday. The function words are the smaller ones. For example, I, the A, or on. And so what happens is that you have to constantly move your volume. You have to constantly either increase your pitch or lower your pitch or increase your volume or lower your volume. When you start off with, for example, a function word, it's usually low and then you increase and then it's low and then increase and then it goes back to low and then, you know, you finish it off with high and low, right? Uh, and, and so it, it usually sounds like this. I bought a car on Tuesday. I bought a car on Tuesday. And so it sounds like there's like a little music behind it. And that's what we're looking for when we talk about rhythm and the rules. So remember, more volume on the big words, less volume on the little words. Okay, there's another example. I took a bus to the park. I took a bus to the park, right? I took a bus to the park. And it sounds like you're rapping. Um, of course, you don't want to do it like if you're rapping because it's going to sound kind of weird, but that is what you're supposed to be doing in an actual conversation, right? What did you do yesterday? Oh, well, I took a bus to the park. You know, it like a nice little ride. And so, you know, I was able to get there, you know, about 3 p.m. and see the sunset. All right. That's good for you. Okay. We have other exercises here that you guys can see. Small word, big word, small, big word, right? I'll build a fire in the fireplace. I'll build a fire in the fireplace. I will build a fire in the fireplace. Josh is reading a newspaper article. Josh is reading a newspaper article. What is he doing? He's reading a newspaper article. And so that's how you guys kind of work with the rhythm. We have the pronunciation, and so now pronunciation has to do with how you stress some of the words, right? In this particular exercise, there were some specific um, letters that you had to read a little bit louder than others to express um, anger, happiness, relief. And so that's the idea behind these here. We have the intonation where you start off with either standard, high, or low. And there were some practices on here which we talked about falling and rising intonation. And that's usually, I would say, what, what makes up the majority of it, right? Rising and falling intonation. In major, I would say that in the majority of cases, um, you would have to use either falling intonations because the rising intonation is usually just done for like when you guys are asking a certain type of questions and so if you're not asking too many questions then you're really not going to get too many rising intonations right the majority of what we say in a conversation has to do with the falling 
intonation. Now, there are conversations where you have to do both, right? When you have to f use falling intonation and you also have to use, you know, the rising intonation, okay? Um, from there, we talked about some clauses, some grammar focuses, and then we jumped right into pronunciation and the exercises that we did, okay? Uh, let me go ahead. I think I'm going to include this one as well. Some of these slides are actually pretty cool. And so there's this one here, right? The word is the me. I'm sorry. The words are the same. It's raining, right? Now, what happens is that you can change the meaning depending on how you say that, okay? Who wants to try out in saying it's raining in a surprise way, in a, in a surprise intonation, using surprise, how would you say it's raining? Who wants to volunteer for this one? This one's easy, right? It's really easy. La despedida, la despedida. Volunteers, volunteers. Real quick. The first, <laughs> it's like, it's raining. All right. Yeah. It's like a question, right? Yeah. So imagine, in, imagine. In the, other, yeah. in the other is, it's raining. Yeah, we go, right? Con la mala cara. Oh, it's raining. Okay. Yeah. And then the last one. Oh, it's raining. There we go. Right. So <laughs> that's it. That's it. So you see how it's the same thing, but the way that you say it and the way that you're, you know, you're using your mouth and whether you're smiling or whether you're sad, that, it, that brings the meaning out. You could say the words and you can say them in, the, you know, in every which way and they will never change. It will always be, it's raining. What's happening outside? It's raining. But the meaning of that, you have total 100% control of. And so it could be a surprise, it could be annoying, and it could be something that's really good. All right, good, good, good. All right, so with that, there are some other practices about saying goodbye and saying, how are you? We can, there's also this one, it's kind of like a dating one, but I think we're gonna skip right through all that. And we're gonna go into this one here. Okay, so what is this about? Remember what I told you, the, the majority of conversations have a dropping intonation, right? The majority of the sentences that we use, the majority of things that we say, they usually have that falling intonation. And so I wanted to practice some of that. Why are we practicing more on the falling intonation than on the, um, uh, on the, um, what is it? Not the falling, but rising. There we go, rising intonation. Because rising is almost automatic. Whenever you ask a question, right? Which is a big percentage of how we have conversations as well whenever you are asking the questions. Most of those questions that you guys are using will require for you to use rising intonation. So you could say that that one is a little bit easier because it's, it's you know, as soon as you guys say, what are you doing today? That is already a rising intonation, okay? Now, what is hard for some of us is actually dropping that intonation, right? Dropping that volume. Because we, what we don't want to do is for, for it to sound like we are not saying the last word. Like, I don't want you guys to go and say, we, want, we went for a ride in a, right? And nobody can hear what you said in the last word. That's not, that's not the case. What I want you guys to be able to do is to be able to use that last word and kind of make it a little bit longer as you drop the sound. We went for a ride in the car. And then you drop, you know, it's kind of like a long drop car. 
I must get my hair cut, right? And then we have to drop it. And so, so these are the examples that we're gonna be using. And this is how we practice. And you see how it starts off up here and then we drop, right? We went for a ride in the car and then it drops car. I must get my hair cut. Oh, a hair cut, right? Now it sounds kind of weird because we're stopping, but once you guys get a little bit more practice and making these a little bit longer, it, 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 it just sounds out when you guys are saying something. We will meet you at the station and then you drop, right? We'll meet you at the station and then it drops volume. You must take them home, right? You must take them home and then you drop. So all of these are examples of falling intonation, which is once again, what we most commonly do and say. All right, so take a, take a, take a quick look at the sentence, practice to yourself, and then we're going to give it a shot and see how that sounds. All right, all right. Who would like to go first? Who would like to test out the pronunciation exercise? No volunteers. No volunteers today. Yeah, of course there's volunteers. There's always volunteers. Me teacher. Oh, Maricela, let's try it out. Yes, Maricela, I don't remember if we did this one already in the last module. Did we do this one? No. I don't, re I don't remember. No, I, okay. No, no, no. All right, so here they are, and you can try, uh, let me see, let's try off with this one. We went for a ride. We went for a ride in the car. There we go, right, the car, and then you have to drop it, the car. And car. so remember, at first, when you guys are getting used to it, it's gonna sound kind of weird, right? But the more you use it and the more you put it into practice, it actually starts to sound out a little bit better. All right, let's try one more. Let's try this really long one, Maricela. We will meet you at the station. <laughs> I don't know. There, there we, we go. Will, <laughs> yeah. We will meet you at the, we we will, will you at the station. We will I meet. Dale, meet. Meet, sorry. Me, it's okay. We will meet. We will meet you. At the station right and then so you drop it we will meet you at the station okay and then that's it that's it that's how you that's how you station. drop it yeah okay and so the idea is as follows you have a regular word right how do you make it how do you make it drop in sound right for example home how do you make that well what you what you have to do is kind of make it a little bit longer than usual, right? So instead of just saying home real quick, real sharp, you extend it, you add maybe an O, you add maybe an E, and then so it sounds out a little bit different because it will say home. And then as, as you're practicing on that volume, you start off with home and then you drop it a little bit, right? So um, you must take them home and then it drops the volume. And that's pretty much how you do it. I must get my hair cut, right? My hair cut all the way to the bottom. So you could say that you can start off with a big breath and then you release it. And then at the very bottom, cut. I must get my hair cut and then it drops all the way to the end. So now, once again, remember there's three different types of intonations, if you, if you would, right? The first one is rising. The second one, 
is falling or vice versa. It's falling, rising, and then you have conversations that have both. And so it makes it a little bit, you know, it makes it a little bit easier for you guys to be able to, to kind of go from one to the other. And rising, falling intonation, let me, let me talk to you guys about that for a second. And let me just tell you when to use what, okay? This is what I was telling you in regards to when do I use that falling intonation. And so whenever you are using a, a statement, something as simple as nice to me, and then we drop the volume, you. So you start off all excited, right? Hi, oh my goodness, nice to meet you. And then it drops in volume. And then so these are all falling intonations that usually automatically come to you. You guys don't really have to, you know, but you have to keep in mind that this is a big percentage of what we say in a conversation. We have the statements. These are all dropping. Any statement that you do will drop, right? That is falling intonation. If you are giving a command, write your name here. That is also falling intonation. Show me what you've written. That is falling intonation. When you guys ask a WH question, and you are requesting information, then that will drop. That will usually just be a drop in that intonation. What country do you come from? And then we drop. Where do you work? So it starts off like very happy, very enthusiastic, and then we kind of hang back a little bit where do you work? When does the shop open? Okay. Falling intonation. This is, these are the examples. Statements, commands, and questions if they are WH questions. Okay. We have rising intonation. Rising intonation is used when you guys use questions that require a yes or no. So it changes a little bit, right? So you guys see how there's no WH here. Do you like your new teacher? Starts off low and then teacher gets a little bit louder, right? Do you like your new teacher? Yes, yes, we do, yay, right? Whenever you are doing a yes, no question, this requires a rise in your intonation on the last word, right? The last word gets a volume hike. When you do kind of like a double question, when you, I, well, they're called question tags. And the question tags usually are formatted in two. You start off with a statement, we've met already. And then you ask the question, haven't we? And that one has a little, you know, has that push and it has that volume, it has that hike. You like fish, don't you? And then there's a rise in volume. You're a new student, aren't you? Right, like you don't have to go up in people's faces like I am doing it. You can just increase the volume and that should be okay. Now, if you want to give it like really dramatic effect, you can say that. You can say, the view is beautiful, isn't it? And then, da -da -da, right, you guys can do it that way. I don't know how many times you guys will be able to, you are going to be able to get away with it, but you know, it, it works. There is also rise and fall. So you can have a conversation that has both. So now, under what circumstances do you do that? When you are providing choices, when you are giving lists, when you have an unfinished thought or a partial statement that you want to complete, or when you are using conditional sentences, okay? Now, remember that there are rules and the rules are there for you to have an idea of how to do it. 
It doesn't necessarily mean that that is 100% of the way you're supposed to do it. There are people that follow the rules, there are people that don't, and there are people that bend them, right? So it's totally okay. In this particular case, the example of the lists, right? You have to start high and then drop. But right in the middle, if the list is too long, in the middle, it has to be equal. You can't be high and you can't be low. So for example, I went to the supermarket and I got apples, pears, bananas, and oranges. Apples, I'm really happy with the apples, pears, bananas, and oranges, right? And then it, todo el ánimo se cae. Now, there is a chance that you could be excited about all of the vegetables or all of the fruits. And so you could say, hey, I went to the market and I got all my favorite fruits, apples, pears, bananas, delicious, right? You could do it. You could do it like that as well. But on a normal conversation, when somebody asks you, what did you get? And you're, gonna, and you're going to give a list. Remember, you start off apples, right? You start off the first item on the list gets the volume. The last item on the list gets the volume drop. Apples, pears, bananas, and oranges, right? Apples, pears, bananas, and oranges. And this one has the drop. This one has the falling intonation. Remember, rise, fall, you can use when providing choices, when giving lists, when you have unfinished thoughts or partial statements, or when you're using conditional sentences. If he calls, ask him to leave a message, and then you drop the volume, right? So that's usually how I do it. Whenever you start it off, gets the increase in volume, and then whatever you say last, gets the volume to drop, okay? All right, all right, everybody. That's the quick review and pronunciation. As you guys can see, we have some role play. No, but we're not gonna do the role plays on this one. We might do them a lot on the next module, the next module. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. All right, here we go, guys. They sent a WhatsApp communication today. Are you guys already at 80%? Who is already at that 80% mark? Jorge, George, George is at that 80% or above. Me as your teacher. Hey, Ricardo, nice. Nice to see. Me as your teacher. Let me see what I have. So you guys go into your platform. You can go directly into progress. Tell me 85%. All right, good. And I am at, oh, 72%. Oh. <laughs> All right. Alexander, 97, good for you. Uh, I think I already mentioned it. Delmi, 85, good for you. Jose, all right, all right, all right, good. This is where you guys can see how, you know, oh my God, all of section four I'm missing. I think I'm gonna have to do that today. Okay. If you guys come to the section, you guys will be able to see a button that says claim your certificate. Claim your certificate. Madeline, I sent you the presentation last night. Did you get it? I mean, it wasn't complete. It was still I missing. I didn't receive. I didn't receive. Let me see here what happened. I need it, teacher. I, I sent it, look, I sent it. M. Ah. Araya 
at c e e s dot e d u dot yes yeah i sent yes. it Look, so only cute. that it's it's very big it's 12 megabytes oh thank you okay i yeah, i'm right? going That's to review a... i'm going to review thank you very much okay yeah, okay all right, so uh, for everybody else that, that's on here, that you guys will be getting that today. So, ojo, ojo con eso, ojo con eso. And let me see, let me go back. Okay, here we go. All right, so if you guys have reached the 80% mark or above, then what happens is that you will get a button here. You will see a button. How many of you guys have been able to see the button? that says claim your certificate. Yeah, you guys saw it, okay. Sometimes it appears, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, hey, good good for you, Ricardo. Yeah, it, sometimes it does. In my case, it's not here because, well, I haven't gotten to that point yet, okay? If you guys, nice, nice for you guys, all right. If you guys have not completed the final test, let's see. We, let me see, I promised that we were gonna do two sections. I think that with this, I'm gonna hit my 80%. Let me see, let's try it out. All right, guys, this is the final two sections on the final exam. And so it says choosing words and there's two parts to it. Okay, so here we go. Choose the words that best complete each sentence. Okay, all right, let's try it out, let's see. All right, guys, I need your help. You guys already completed these. If there are people who have not completed it yet, please, right, take a look at what we're going to do. And, you know, teamwork. All right, blank, my alarm goes off, I get in the shower. Oh, these are the words, as soon as or since. Ah. Which of the two is the best? Which one do you guys think works the best? As soon as. As soon as? As soon as my alarm goes off, I get in the shower. Oh, you know what? If you say since, since my alarm goes off, uh, that one doesn't sound too good. Since my that alarm goes sense. off, it doesn't, it doesn't have too much logic behind it. All right. All right. Number two on this one. We have a couple. We have a couple. Blank, taking a shower, I make coffee. After. 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 After, After taking a shower, I make coffee. How many of you guys make the coffee first and then take a shower no no nobody no, no. 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 how many no. take a shower how many of you take a shower and make the coffee at the same time solo yo solo yo la, ca la cafetera la cafetera en el baño la cafetera en el baño you take a shower with the hot water and you put your your cup with coffee oh yeah that's right yeah, and that's fine there's there's hot water in a popa that is true all right number three blank eating breakfast i watch the news on tv while 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 while, while. while eating breakfast i watch the news on tv okay number four blank leaving for work i take the dog for a walk right before right before ever since right whenever you guys see a word you can sound it out to yourself, right? You can say into eating breakfast. No, that doesn't sound good. Right Teacher. before. Yes, yes, Adeline. Uh, what is the meaning right before? Right before is, I want to say, well, in Spanish, it would be antes de salir para mi trabajo or before. I go to work. So so this is an example of you using ahorita, right? Or right before. Como, como decimos en español, cabalito antes de salir de la casa. I take the dog for a walk. So right before in this instance, okay. is it, it actually means that 
Thank you. You will be leaving at 8 a.m. And at 7.55, you always take your dog for a walk, right? So right before you leave for work, okay? Number five, I am late. I take a taxi instead of the train to work. Whenever. Whenever. After I'm late. After I'm late? No, no, right? Whenever I'm running late, I take a taxi instead of the bus. Because I know that if I take the bus, I am going to be late. But if I take the taxi, there's a big percentage that I might get there in time, okay? Number six, blank, I arrive at work. I sit in front of my computer all day. Until, until. From the moment. From the moment. From the moment or until? Until. From the moment. From the moment. From the moment. There's, like, there's a there's a few, there's a few. <laughs> there's a few, I mean, I mean the, the, the majority. Let's try the majority. If that doesn't work, we'll put until. All right, we're gonna leave it that, like that. And then part two, let's try part two. Match the sentences halves to form complete sentences. So we have half up here, and then we're going to have to choose the second half. I can fall asleep easily most nights unless I start thinking about problems at work. I start thinking about problems at work. Okay. I can fall asleep easily most nights unless I don't have to get up early the next day. Ooh. I get thirsty at night. Mm, that one could, that's a possibility. I only got four hours of sleep last night. No. I start thinking about problems at work, you know? It's dark in my room. No, well, if it's dark, you go to sleep. Darker. You know what? I, I We're gonna leave it like this, but I, it, the, the first one sounds really, really close as well. So I'm torn between these two. All right, let's go. Uh, number two, I sleep soundly all night as long as it's dark in my room. It's dark in my room. You know, you, I don't know if it's just me. Um, I don't know if there's more people in the world. But if in my room there is too much darkness, I cannot sleep. Yes. Many people. Is that is that just me or how about the class? How, how do you guys feel? I need the, uh, in my in my case, I need uh -huh. the room is so dark. Really? Because he, um, okay. If there's a light, I can't sleep. <laughs> can't sleep with the light. Teacher, yes, how do you say? Eh, how do you say? Eh, puede hacer cualquiera. It, it say you can say any of the choices are okay. That's one way of saying it. There's actually a few ways to say it. You can say- Any uh, or any, any are okay. Any of the choices are okay. Of the choices. Anything yes. you choose is okay. Okay. All the answers are Depending okay. Possible. Right, all the answers are, are possible. Yeah, or the all the answers are a possible choice. Yeah, you can you can do it like that. So it just it, it depends on how you know you want to say it, how wordy you want to say it. All right, so I was gonna tell you that what I have is una lamparita que tira la luz para el techo, and then in el techo it shows like stars and stuff like that, kind of like my background. And if I don't have that on, I can't go to sleep. I don't know. It's just. Eso se llama una I, night. I, there, una night I light. bought one of them, but it doesn't work for me. It, really? Oh man! No, you know yeah. what? I actually, I actually had like a couple of those. I had one that would project um, the constellations, and that one was that one was pretty cool. I really like that one. But it was, you know, you, you get kind of old and it's, I don't know, it feels weird after some time. All right, all right, everybody. So in this particular case, it's dark in my room, okay. Number three, I feel pretty good today. 
considering that? I only got four hours of sleep last, last night. I only got four hours of sleep last night. Scientists, including Einstein, says that you only need four hours instead of the eight hours. But I think that most of us have gone through a period where you only sleep four hours and you feel really, really tired. So I don't know what the scientists were doing that they were only <laughs> sleeping four hours, right? Okay. Number four, I keep a glass of water by my bed in case. Dun, dun, dun. I get thirsty at night. I get thirsty at night. We got that one. And final one, I always go to bed at 10 p.m. even if Oh, I see here. I only got four hours. Well, we already used that one. No, 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 no. Yeah, we already got that one. I think it's... Ah, I, I don't the have first one, I didn't yeah. have early in the to get up day. early to the next day, yes. All right. I mean, it's, it, looks, it looks all right. Let's see, let's try it out. Here we go, here we go, here we go. And yeah, yeah, we, got we, we got it. We got it. That's it. A ver, the next one, real quick. Oh, it's a reading exercise. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> How many parts do we have? Oh, it's only five. Who would like to practice their reading skills? Any volunteers? I would like to be oh, volunteer. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. Read the travel brochure, then check true or false for each statement. Welcome to Xiangmei, Thailand's second largest city. Here you can explore ancient temples, colorful markets, and historic architecture. Chiang Mai has the charm of an old mountain town with all the conveniences of a modern cultural center. There is great nightlife and hotels for every budget. Chiang Mai, which is located on the Pink River and near the mountains, is also a wonderful place for an outdoor adventure. You can trek through the mountains where you will see breathtaking scenery, scenery and interact with local hill tribal people. Or you can go on a tour of the area's my clan waterfall, not far outside the city. The cool season of December to February is when many people choose to visit Chiang Mai. May, February is February is when the famous flower festival is held and the whole city is lined with flowers boxes. It is not to be missed. There is something for everyone in Chiang Mai. Plan your trip today. Yeah, there we go. Very, very well done. Okay, so some of the ones that we usually miss, which is the CH you got, right? Remember, remember CH for us is it's really hard, but you guys have to make sure you guys sound it out. Ch Ch Chang, right? Chang. Uh, <laughs> there was also another one, Charm. Sound it out and it's it, you guys will be okay. Charm. So you, you hit those right right in the nail right <laughs> you got those um i thought that you might have had issues with the th but they'll you got it so thailand right thailand oh, now so the only three words that i got that i would recommend that we practice on are let me say let me show you uh the first one is mountain 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 mountain, mountain. Ma yeah that was yeah yeah the good catch good catch that was the that was another one that i wanted to let me see where 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 is it teacher architecture is it's okay the pronunciation architecture it, no is our key como ar key. architecture architect yeah architect historic architect architecture historic Architecture. Historic. 
historic, historic. y bajas historic. el volumen. Comenzas alto. His. Historic. historic. Yeah, there we go. Historic architecture. So, yeah. So, mountain. Let's try it again. Mountain. 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 There was another one. Scenery. At the bottom, mm -hmm. I think it was. Where mm -hmm. is it? Waterfalls? No. Scenery. It's a, yeah, there was, a, there was one that said scenery. Flower festival is, is healed. healed. There's, the it says scenery. scenery. Like scenery. The, yeah, like the scene. It, when you guys go to a play. Scenery. There it is. Breathtaking scenery. 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 The next one is February. February. Now February. this one, this one is tricky. I want you guys February. to think. I want you guys to think of it as February. So even though it, yeah, February. Even though it's not spelled like it's not spelled that way. If you guys, February. 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 Well, no, it is, February. right? It is. It is okay, so there's another one. That there is something see. for everyone in There's in another one. I've, I've heard that word like February. Right. February. So it is in, yeah, some people, some people will actually say February, like that, like if, like that. February, 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 mm -hmm. oh no. But February, so now here's the thing, there's another one, library, have you guys, You know, it's, it doesn't let me put it. Library is another one that you you actually, even though there's an R right smack in the middle. Library. 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 The pronunciation is, it sounds very, very, very close to February. So February, library, you guys can kind of use that for for comparison. All right, all right. So move, let's go, let's go, let's go. Oh, let's see. So Chiang Mai has cheap and expensive places to stay. Is that true or false? True. True, they say, true. all right, okay. Chiang Mai is a small town. Is that true or false? False. False, wow. The area around Chiang Mai is ugly and industrial. False. False. The Mei Klang waterfalls are far from the city. False. False. The flower festival is held during the cool season. True. True. Uh, true. A ver. And, and, oh, we got it, everybody. We got it. All right, all right. So you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna yeah. test to see what my progress Bro. is. Madeline, Madeline, hello. <gasps> hey, excuse, excuse me, teacher. Yes, is Madeline. Through or through? Through or through? No, uh, in this particular case, when we are using false or true. True. This true. one here, true. yeah. True. This one here is true. true. True or false? True. True or false? Uh, now, I, the I, other I one. Knew, I knew. The true. other word true. is with, through. With there we go. And then there's true. the other one for throwing. Uh, Past tense. True. There we go. So true. it's a little bit confusing. Okay. It's a little bit confusing, but remember, right? Um, uh, somebody's throwing something 
or somebody threw something. Um, I want to get through the crowd. And is this true or false? True or false? True, true or false, okay. Yeah. So there's a slight, with the H, I think it's, it's the hardest, right? T-R-O-U-G-H, through or throw or true. Ladies and gentlemen, I have my certificate. Yeah, yeah. Congratulations, teacher. Le quiero dar las gracias a todas las personas chiquitas en el mundo. That's a, that's a direct translation, right? I would like to thank all the little people in the world. Have you guys ever heard something like that? That people say, I would like to thank. They have nice scientific. No, teacher. No, you never heard that before? Oh, my goodness. Madeline, congratulations. No, <laughs> right? I would like to thank all the little people. Well, the, the actual thing that you say is, uh, I would like to thank all the little people that I had to step on to get to where I am today. Yay. Pero se oye así como que, uy. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here's my certificate. I am going to claim it and I am now certified. So hopefully you guys are also able to get that. I feel so happy. So, so happy. Rafa, hello. Yes, sir. Uh, I have a question before we finish. <laughs> yeah. Um, will, my will, question. Will you be, Richard, will you be in the next course? Yes. Um, well, I don't know if I'm going to get like the same classes, but we are going again with advance. So hopefully I get some of you guys back in. Yeah. En el otro sí lo voy a escoger para With que that? practiquen. In advance too, we're going to choose you to, 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 to interact. Ahí sí, ahí sí, ya no, ahí sí que ya no van a poder decir, tengo pena, teacher, no, hombre, si ya tenemos como cinco ciclos juntos. Rafael, your question, my friend. Okay. Yeah, my question is, if I can... I was to do this. Can I contract that sen sentence like I was to do this? Type it, type it in. Type it in. Which one? Okay. Type type that sentence in. All right, everybody. In preparation for the next module. If you guys are going through to the next module, module remember the participation practice. Um, you know, I think that some of the teachers, they will ask for volunteers, um, but there are some teachers that will specifically say, hey, you, you have to participate, right? Um, no se sientan como que los están atacando. It's not an attack on your persona. Uh, they're not picking on you. Uh, there's no specific reason. Uh, but they do want you guys to participate. So some of the teachers will choose from the class and they will tell you to practice a little bit. Uh, I was going to do this. I was to do this. No, no, Raf. You won't be able to do. No, you won't be able to do it. Because, for example, I was listening to a song. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because I was listening to a song that is from the Bastard Boy. How was I to know? And I think that is, how was I going to know? <laughs> how was, well, how was I how was going I to know? How was I, well, how see that. How was that's, I to know? Well, how was I to know you can use? How was I to know? Yes, like that you can. But the way you, the way you have it before where there's the word going and then the word going is no longer there. It completely right. changes the whole meaning of that sentence. So in this particular case, you won't be able to take it out. You actually have to leave that in there. Okay. But why, why is it is correct if I said, how was I to know? Uh, well, because here you, you are asking you are asking a question and everything that is being used actually provides information to what it is that you're looking for. So, uh, so for example, right? How was I to know that you had a boyfriend? 
if you never told me. But but you don't have to say anything else. Right now, because, with the sentence that you have, uh, how was I to know? I, I, I don't even remember how that one sounds. <laughs> how was I to know? Teacher, because, I'll, because I'll for Google example, it. that would be like a, con no, a contract form of how was I going to know, right? You Is know, like well, the thing is that it's not a contraction per se. You you know what? How was I to know? I mean, it's it, it's it's correct. How was I going to know? Actually, actually, when you leave going, it, it actually sounds a little bit weird. How was I going to know? So. How was I supposed to know? I think it's the best way to to say it. You know what? I haven't heard how was I going okay. how was I going to know? I haven't I haven't used it that way. Now I have used how was I supposed to know? How was I supposed because, to know? No. Let's Google it. Yes, because the, the 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 spelling, because I mean the the structure for the past progressive would be that, right? I was going to know. How, uh, I wasn't going to know. How was, was I, I going to know? Well, but see, that's the thing. How was I going to know? It doesn't. How was? No. How was I? I'm going, going to, know. to no, know. it doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't. No cuadra, Rafa. No cuadra. <laughs> see, how was I to know? How was I going to know? Oh, let me see. See how it says. How was? How am I supposed to know? Teacher, I think yeah. uh, no. it can be believe because uh, in past it was, was in a future. No, you know how was I going to know? It's impossible, teacher. You know, I. The thing is that it just sounds it just sounds weird. Now that's why I was telling you, Raf. I have heard how am I supposed to know, or how was I supposed to know? But how was I going to know? It doesn't fit. How could it no, see how it's impossible. See, how, going to. see see how it's people because see it, how, it follows the structure. Well it do, it does, but it doesn't aggressive. but it doesn't sound right. And look, look at all the people are saying no, it doesn't sound right. But okay. but you know what I would recommend what what I would rep what I would recommend, Raf, you suppose or leave it okay. as is. How was I to know? Leave it like that. Or how was I supposed to know? And those those two sound a okay, but this one, this one sounds weird. All right, but we can always double check, Teacher. man. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, Raf. Okay. Because for example, how was I? You say, I I, I was going to go to my How was I going house. to know? That's correct. Well, right. you know, how was I going to know? How was I going to know? You know, I mean, the more you say it, the, the more it sounds like it could be right. It could be okay to use. However, to me, it still sounds kind of weird. What would I use? I would say, how was I supposed to know that I had to go to your mother's house? But, but then again, we can double check. Bueno, vamos, we're going to sleep on it and see what comes up. Y el siguiente module, Rafael, I'm going to have a true factual answer. All right. Teacher. Alan. Teacher. Hello. Tell me. Hello, I don't hello. understand when you say Mayo. When I say? Mayo. 
Macho. 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 Oh, really? Macho. Why? Um, well, e each one of the classes, each one of the classes is a module. Mayo, I don't understand that. No, word. I think that you hear me say Mayo, but I don't say Mayo. I say Mayo. Como my, a ver, let's say it like this. My jewel. Así. Mayo. 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 Yeah, Mayo. What is the meaning, Mayo? Modulo. Modulo. Mayo. Oh. Okay. So, so I will see you guys for the next module. All right, ladies and gentlemen, por favor, acuérdense, si tenemos clase next time around, we are going to practice a little bit more and we're going to get you guys into conversations as well because that's the whole idea, right? Module number two for advance coming up. Congratulations to everybody. Well done. My, oh my head well. Thank you, teacher. Okay, Majo, thank you, teacher. Majo. Thank you very much, teacher, for everything, for your help. Thank you. Thank pleasure. you, guys. And remember that I will, be sending, I will be sending the presentation either tonight or tomorrow. <laughs> thank you, sir. On the next March. The module, the there we go. Mayo. You guys got it. the next month, the next mayo. See you in mayo. The next mayo. Module, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> See you guys. Bye. Good night. Bye. Bye. Good night. Good night. Good night. When will be? When will be the ma the next mayo? The next module starts April, between April 1st and April 5th. Oh. Entre el 1 y el 5. El 5, ¿cómo es? 5, ¿cómo es? Semana Santa. Semana oh, Santa. my God, we have Semana Santa. Yeah. Oh, well, we're going to have to check now. In vacation? Well, I hope not. We're going to be on vacation. I received a message saying that after the vacations. Oh, okay. So then maybe, maybe on the week of the, what is that? The week of the, oh my God, the week of the 12th? Yeah. yeah. Porque semana es, es del cinco, I mean, the whole week. Yeah. Oh. So I, I can definitely add, right? It doesn't it start on the fifth? Yes. Vaya. El cinco, el siete, el nueve, and then we start into April 12th, if that's the case. Después de la vacación. Yeah. So, wow. Hopefully, hopefully, right? Vacation or vacation? Vacation. 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 Vacation, yeah. After vacation. All right, everybody. See you guys. See you in the next mail, Joel. Okay. See you, teacher. Okay. Have a nice holidays. You too. You too, everybody.